debate in Greece in 2007. What you are about to watch is style of debate which encourages a high level of exchange and engagement between two teams. Each speaker will have eight minutes to make their speech. After one minute, the pen keeper will sit on one, so like this. After this sound, the debaters on the other team may offer points of information to the speaker. The debaters must then open the offer points of information. The speaker holding the floor may choose to accept or decline a point when it is offered. At the 7 minute mark, the timekeeper will make a signal once like this. After this sound, no more points of information may be offered for the rest of the speech. At the 8 minute mark, the timekeeper will make a double signal like this. After this sound, the speaker must conclude with a few seconds. There will be a short break at the end of each speech for an adjudicator to complete their notes. After six main speeches, each team will have the opportunity to make a four-minute reply speech. This can be made with the first or second speaker on the team. No points of information are allowed during reply speeches. The opposition will make their reply speech first. Before the debate begins, the audience are reminded to switch off all the phones, pagers, and anything else with my, which might disturb the debaters. Should, the, should you need to exit or re-enter the room for any reason during the debate, please wait until the end of speech to do so. The proposition, the proposition team for this debate is the Team India. The first speaker is Yosef Ali. The second speaker is Aaron Kukla. And the third speaker is Shami as Aurora. The opposition for the debate So I, I, I first thing I will talk to you 
how I will protect the models of society, and my second speaker will later on elaborate on the method of the weight lost. Now, uh, now, before we get to my arguments, I would like to spend an hour that uh, these problems are urgent, even France and Italy, which, is, which are the fashion capitals of the world, are banning models who are under a uh, healthy weight and, uh, and, uh, and what we're just suggesting is that we're following those kind of mechanisms that has already been used by France and Italy. So now, yes, please. Now, body mass index, what you have proposed as a criteria of healthiness, is receiving more and more criticism for not reflecting the real healthiness of a person. How can you still refute? How can you still defend? Yes, I get your point. Right. Well, they're babbling about the MRI is not tangible enough. Uh, first of all, they have to prove other kinds of method to uh, to a to, to, uh, uh, to show that these models are unhealthy. Because what we're saying is that even though a, a BMI is the perfect parameter for models, because no other kinds of parameter can be used because it, it is the most tangible parameter that we have, that it is a direct parameter uh, that is for the model itself. No, so. Now, we're going to my first argument, well, which I will show you how it will protect the models. Now, the problem right now is that, is cool, is that uh, there is some kind of work demand in the fashion industry. This kind of work demand is like unwritten, unwritten law of models, which these kinds of uh, unwritten laws of models are oppressing these models, uh, are, 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 are forcing these models to follow these kinds of, no, these kinds of uh, demand that they are, that, that, uh, that their depressly has to be thin, their depressly has to be as thin as possible, even though that, even though uh, those kinds of methods, whichever they're using, is unhealthy. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, no. What we have to understand is that these models are helpless. We need to help them because because what happened right now is that there is some kind of barrier who bound them, uh, who bound them to actually be healthy. There is some kind of barrier. Uh, to, uh, no, who shout uh, who show them that they have to be uh, um, thin. Uh, or else they got no work at all as a model because uh, while their models uh, they, they, uh, they can uh, they, their primary job is a model then they can uh, do nothing so uh, modeling so if uh, they are getting increased weight then they can uh, they will be uh, fired and then they got uh, no job so that's why they are being stressfully uh, oppressed that uh, they have to follow uh, the uh, demands of the work. Now, the question lies in why we should ban uh, these models instead of just uh, changing the stigma or changing the paradigm. Now, we see that it's effective because this stigma that models have to be fed, whether it is healthy or not, is being planted and seeded deeply in the mind of the, not only models, but also the whole world globally. I think all of you right now here uh, actually might see that it is beautiful. Now this is the example of how actually deep is uh, this kind of paradigm in, in a society. So it's not effective just to say that hey, look, thin uh, is not always beautiful. Because what we have right now is something more than that. And we need this kind of value, we need this kind of method for a direct stimulant, for a direct uh, incentive um, a stimulant a mechanism, wait a minute, for these models to actually uh, be healthier. So. There are a lot of models who are underweight according to the BMI standard, but who are, very, but who are still very healthy. Why do we have to force these models to gain weight when they are in a healthy status? Ladies and gentlemen, while they cannot measure health itself, they can offer to you how to, uh, how to uh, measure healthiness in other forms of measurements. Uh, uh, BMI is the only measurements that we have here to stay on and offer uh, uh, to show that they are healthy or not. Now, uh, uh, on the point of how it will protect the society. Now, society today, let's know, there is an increase of mass media. An increase of mass media, easily we can see that there are increase of models. Because models are known. Yes. Models are used uh, to, pu uh, to publish as a fashion icon and other kinds of icons. Like it or not, these models are like public figures who are society, look up to it, and follow uh, these models. Why? 
because a uh, not only fashion icon, these models indirectly are personal icon, which society see that uh, uh, the personality of beauty is being measured by those models because those models are being used by the industry, so that's why they are beautiful. So now it's very dangerous. It creates a stigma and paradigm in society that in order to be beauty, you have to be. Uh, very thin, uh, like uh, unhealthy or not, uh, like I've told you, and in fact, the side are two. First, they're getting unhealthy, of course. The second one, second one is the dangerous one, which those who can't get thin enough will get frustrated and create a psychological deviation in the mind of the society, which they believe that they cannot be thin enough, then uh, they will consume. Um, Drugs, there will be uh, more uh, uh, unhealthy uh, diseases such as uh, bulimia and anorexic. And even if there are, even there are actually no thin enough word in the in, in the minds of those people, because those people will never get satisfied by what they have achieved. Those people will still think that they are not thin enough. That's why uh, 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 this uh, is very dangerous for them. Thus, it's being justified because we acknowledge that the rights of the society to be healthy is very important, and we should keep and we should uh, ban those models from uh, uh, below healthy weight. Thank you. Eight minutes, eighteen seconds. Um, I thank the first opposition speaker for his and now to open the case for the opposition. I call the Sovereign King.
my systematic matter. But moving on to this third idea about how it protects society. Now this was extremely vague. He never gave us any tangible proof of how all the teenagers suddenly become anorexic or bulimic simply because they see Kate Ross walk down the catwalk. Yes, please. Well, studies prove across the United States of America that most of the fashion industry is a media-centric industry. And the industry basically affects and molds the minds of teenagers. And thin is beautiful. And that's what's propagated throughout. And that is how it affects us. Okay, maybe there is a real books concerning this. But the fact of the matter is the examples that they brought up, the examples of Italy and France, who have adopted this model, isn't really, isn't really working. Just because they adopted this model, um, policy of banning models who are underweight according to their definition, didn't make the French or the Italian teenagers so suddenly reject thinness as an item of beauty. We actually say the item of beauty shifts, it's a trend. And we say that applying this model simply in the time of a few years, it doesn't have a positive effect on how teenagers view beauty. But now, now that I've dealt with all their arguments, I'd like to move on to my own positive matter in today's debate. And I'm going to analyse how it's unfair to the model to enact this policy. And my first point will be how it's unfair to the model's health, and then I'll move on to discuss how this is a discriminatory measure to the models who are dedicated to their jobs. So first I'll to how it's unfair to the model's health. Now ladies and gentlemen, basically they brought up the issue of body mass index. And as I mentioned beforehand, this is not a clear criteria on whether a person is healthy or not. And we say ladies and gentlemen, no thank you, because this is specifically a comparative ratio between um, height and weight. And ladies and gentlemen, we, we all know that healthiness is not as simple as that. According, according to the study, the BMI cannot measure um, simple healthiness because it's dependent on factors such as types of the tissues in your body, um, bone mass, and also race, ladies and gentlemen. We say that in this case, it shows that body mass index cannot be a clear criteria in dividing whether a model is healthy or not. The fact of the matter is that people who are with African descent have bigger body mass index than Asians. And this in, is in no way a clear criteria of deciding whether we should ban a model from a job they have dedicated themselves to. And the fact is, unless the models um, increase their rate rapidly, they will be out of the game. They will be forgotten by the public. And as our first prime minister is established so wonderfully, if they have to increase their rate rapidly in a year, this will bring a natural fact um, to them. An excellent example of this will be the sumo athletes in Japan. What they do to unnaturally increase their weight is they have binge eating ladies and gentlemen. They binge eat before the um, before the match and they sleep, they binge eat, they sleep, they binge eat. And we say, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the models will be doing in the competitive fashion industry. And this will damage the model's health um, in a staggering manner. We say this will harm, harm the model's health even further. Also, they could use um, substances such as anabolic steroids. Now, this in, um, artificially increases your body mass. But the fact is, because of this, women lose fertility and have liver failure. Is this what the proposition wants to promote? Yeah. That we would have models such as Kate Moss, um, Cindy Crawford, increase their weight unnaturally and sacrifice their health. We say that their models will only harm the health of the fashion model. Yes, sir. No, thank you. So moving on to the second point about how it's discriminatory to models. Now, we say that the proposition stance is extremely hypocritical. Because what this comes down to is, they're saying that there's a, there's a right figure to have, that being thin is wrong. And this is hypocritical, ladies and gentlemen, because they're actually setting a standard on what is the right figure a person should have, based on a shaky criteria. And we say that this is simply not good enough, because many models actually have a natural tendency to be thin. I, I, I believe that many of the people sitting in this room know people who eat a lot, but never really seem to get fat. And the fact of the matter is, many models may have a natural tendency, or had the childhood training to eat, eat a little and maintain their weight, many models will work out to be thin. And we say it's a discriminatory measure to models such as Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, and Cindy Crawford to suddenly be banned from the fashion industry because of the effort they put in or because of the natural tendencies to be slim. So we say, ladies and gentlemen, that this is extremely unfair to the models. It's injustice to the effort and the dedication they have put in. The efforts will help, actually, um, they have put in to, to maintain a slim figure. And this is extremely um, discriminatory in another level because it also affects something which is their natural tendency, which they actually don't have a choice over. We say, ladies and gentlemen, in this debate, the proposition is proposing a model which will only harm the models uh, further. Uh, the models will 
be unnaturally or use substances to unnaturally gain weight and this will harm them. So ladies and gentlemen, we have the, we have the operation which firmly believes that for the sake of the models and for the sake of the booming fashion industry, the population can must fall. Thank you. Now, if you take an example, um, what happens during bulimia? 
um, when people form to know the ending well, when they form it after the heating, um, the SCL from the stomach comes up and, um, to the esophagus and the mouth, and eventually it develops and leads into ulcers and cancer. Now we do not want, now this is how the health of these um, models are being affected, because they want to become slim and thin in inverted common. Now that is essentially what we don't want. We want healthy people, and because um, these models are portrayed to society, you know what, it's, it's okay to be slim, it's okay to be vomiting all the time, and it's okay to be developing these diseases which can be prevented. And that is what we want. No, thank you, ma'am. Now, that is what we want. We want to protect this, uh, society at large. Now, many of the youth look up to these, uh, uh, to these uh, models walking down the catwalks. They want to look like them, they want to walk like them. And th that is exactly what we don't want. We want, we want these public figures, um, we don't want them to produce a social stigma that is um, to look like that. And they, we don't want these to become the standards of beauty which have become accepted and it's exactly what we don't want. We are now damaging the eyes of society and we should, and our eyes are policy as stated, we will deal with this effectively. Yes. Then could you please explain the case in countries like Italy and France where they have these current bans but then they still see, don't see further progress in terms of how these models get healthier? So that is why we are sending them under rehabilitation programs. We want them to go on these programs, so thank you, and we, in a year's time, if they can come right and produce and have the correct BMI, then hopefully we can um, reinstate them back into their positions where they were modeling. Now I'll move on to my second point, which is personal liberties. Now we do not want the personal liberty of these models to affect the, the youth and the English, uh, and society at large. Do we want these people to be killing themselves? No, ladies and gentlemen, we do not want that. If, let's take example, the ban of smoking. Now, many, many governments have banned smoking in public places. Now, as the government makes awareness of the dangers of smoking and its effects and has put in place regulations, we would like the same to apply to the fashion industry. Uh, it is now, we do not want damaged bodies uh, of the, these models and the youth. So, in the same way how, um, for you know, thank you, the ban of smoke, sorry, the ban of smoking has been put in place and regulations have been put and awareness has been made, what's the same to be made to the fashion industry, and this will help to infiltrate through to the youth and uh, the society at large. Now, we cannot allow these uh, models' personal liberty to take hold of themselves and lead to destructions of their bodies. Uh, they can't use this as an excuse to judgment of society. Uh, as, as these models have a uh, social responsibility, now they have a social responsibility to take care of their actions and the way they uh, portray themselves. And that is why we cannot allow their personal liberties to affect and destroy the youth at large. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I brought you my rebuttals uh, brought up by the opposition first speaker about them stating how it was unjust to the fashion industry and the model themselves. Yes, it is unjust to them because they are now being, uh, damaging their bodies and many of them have led to death. So, I've dealt with that. They've also stated that the BMI is an ineffective way of measuring healthiness. As we said, we are taking the BMI as an effective way, as there is unfortunately no way of measuring healthiness as it is an abstract in your life. Like, you can't tell. We can't measure happiness and loss, things like that. And we've also stated, they've also brought about two minutes in Japan and their methods of gaining weight healthily. Our policy stated uh, very clearly, we're giving them a year and they, we're going to ensure that they increase the weight in a healthy way and not an unhealthy way and um, use these drugs and other methods um, unhealthily to gain weight. I've also uh, spoken to you about the methods of losing weight and the effects of them doing this and how it affects the youth and society. I also told you about the personal liberties of these models and we cannot allow them to carry on and doing this and let it affect the youth at large and society. Uh, thank you.
And ladies and gentlemen, as a team, at the end of my speech, we as a team will prove to you how the band will be an unjust penalization of models and both the fashion industry. But before I move on to my main argument, I would like to rebut several cases that was brought up by the proposition today. Now first, they were about the urgent need they were portraying of having their policy. And second, their standard of healthiness. And third, the health of the model and the effect of their policy. First, they have portrayed an urgent need for such plan because apparently according to their assertion, so many models are suffering. However, ladies and gentlemen, throughout their two speeches, we have not heard a single statistic or single incident that proves that this is a general phenomenon. No, thank you, ma'am. No, thank you, ma'am. A single phenomenon that this is a huge trend. However, what we argue as an opposition is that it is tragic and indeed sad that several few exception and misguided models are suffering. However, ladies and gentlemen, they have not established an urgent need. They have not proven to us how this is a general trend. However, ladies and gentlemen, in my substantive argument, I will prove to you how the responsible model agencies are taking care of the health of its models in the status quo. And the second contention was about the standard of health. Now the office, the proposition again asserted that BMI is the best way and the only way to measure a person's health. However, we have to question them again and again why it is effective. Now they have not proven us a single point, but our first speaker of the opposition has proven to you that BMI, body mass index, is a discriminatory measure that um, has different measurements for race and gender. And therefore, it does not reflect the person's race or gender, and the amount of body mass index is no, thank you, sir. It's not just to fit the healthiness of every people. Now, in my third point was that whether or not it would harm the model. Now, according to their plan, the proposition has proposed that they will check a weight of a model once in a year and do not care about them for 364 other days of their year. And therefore, this is not. No, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. This promotes the binge eating and even more unhealthy behavior such as our first speaker of the opposition has mentioned. Now she had mentioned how the small um, players of Japan increased their weight suddenly by binge eating and sleeping and binge eating and sleeping. And after that day of when they measure their body mass index, the model will have to lose weight in a sudden and dramatic way. And then she will depend on steroids, as our first speaker mentioned, or will resort to other unhealthy measures in order to adapt to her new system. Now ladies and gentlemen, now that I, I have rebutted all the cases proposed by the proposition, let me move on to my own substantive argument of how there are how it is unfair to punish responsible fashion industry for the actions of few misguided models. Now ladies and gentlemen, today we have heard a rather simplistic analysis, or rather should I put it, assertion of the proposition saying that the model agencies are evil. They don't care about their Five models. Minutes. Just a moment, sir. If they don't care about their models and they uh, put harsh measures on them, oppress their models and do whatever they want with them. Yes, sir. We're not saying that fashion industry is forcing them. We're saying that the stigma is everywhere, it's getting deep, and we need to have these fashion industries yes, sir. to I get their model safe and healthy. Now, Thank I will you. prove in my substantive argument of how in the status quo, these various model agencies do have the right measure to ensure the health of their models against such absurd desires of the proposition. Now, it is, we believe as the opposition that it is so unfortunate that few misguided models are sadly suffering because of their own selfishness and because of their own desire. However, we assert that we cannot create a law that will deject and they will cripple the whole fashion industry just based on the um, exceptional actions of few models. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will prove to you how the model industries in the status quo do have numerous measures. Now, we live in a society where individual and famous supermodels are immensely valuable. People like Naomi Campbell, people like Katie Moss, they are not created in a day. Now, it takes years of investment to create a supermodel like the persons that I have mentioned, and it also takes even more effort to make them devoted and have the right connection with one single model agency in a competitive, no thank you, sir.
a familiar competitive model industry. In many of these industries, we see in the status quo that numerous model agencies do try to promote the well-being of their own models. Now, models like Lindsay Lohan or Katie, Mary Kate Olson once suffered from underweight and once had unhealthy body conditions. However, since it was imperative to these model agencies that they had their models healthy and they had these models protected against the um, acquisitions of the general public, they sent them back voluntarily to rehabilitation centers so that they will gain a healthy condition by themselves. Now, this is a mechanism that not happened to only these two people, but also as Jessica Alba and other sorts of numerous models who have now gained a reputation for having a well-being lifestyle and having a healthy condition. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in addition, what you must know is that the fashion industry is very sensitive to rumors and is very sensitive to its public image. And we see that when a, a certain company or a model agency has to promote its image, it cannot bear to take the acquisition of other models and even some magazines who try to publicize these, the fault of these um, unhealthy and observed model agencies. No, thank you, sir such as Vogue or L, and that they try to promote the healthy lifestyle of models. And, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, models agencies that promote such healthy lifestyle are gaining a boost. They're gaining a boost. In the USA, there is an agency called the Ugly Model Agency, which select unconventional beauty and even the disabled for their own model. And because they promote such a fair and healthy lifestyle, it is gaining immense popularity and has been featured by numerous magazines and the models who have been selected by their um, by those agencies are gaining more and more popularity and recognition by even the major catwalks of the Europe, of Europe such as Milano and Spain. And ladies and gentlemen, what have I proven to you today? First, my first speaker has proven to you how the ban only generates unhealthy behavior and it is a discriminatory measure to individual models. And second, I as the deputy prime minister, deputy leader of opposition, has proven to you how it is a discriminatory and unjust measure for the um, for government to define beauty in um, for the few exceptional behaviors of misguided models. And that is why we are
However, in times of the BMI maybe, but we do need a standard. There is much information. Okay. It has to be used because there is no other measure whatsoever. And you keep uh, the proposition of the right now. Why are you accepting a policy that does not even have a regular criteria or reliable standard to measure the health of the people? When there's a better one, we will use that. However, at this point, there isn't. And what uh, the opposition keeps talking on the fact that they will unhealthily gain weight, which we're suggesting we have. Our policy does not imply binge eating into the Japanese sumo wrestlers. We state that there is a year, a three year given the model to rehabilitate themselves and to go to rehab. The weight is not checked once a year, but it is checked at regular intervals. Also, uh, we use excessive use of cocaine, LSD and other drugs which all then again influence and more teenage minds. Okay. Um, what the opposition seems to be stating is that society is not really affected by the models. They are mainly concerned with their jobs, which is a very narrow view. Because when we go to see, these models are icons who are seen across the globe. They are there to affect the world the way the youth thinks. It is unfair to ignore society as a whole, as it was done for Mafia to start. We banned that book. Maybe there are a few people who do appreciate his gruesome works, but not everyone. We do not want to justify a lifestyle that is killing the youth, a lifestyle that may perpetuate unhealthiness across generations. Thing may, no, thank you. Thing may not be beautiful. Thing does not have to be beautiful just because. Giselle Bumchen is gorgeous. Uh, and about the rumors that the fashion industry is susceptible to, I just like to say the old saying there's no smoke.
problem with this standard. First of all, it is the wrong standard, ladies and gentlemen, because it doesn't take into account the fact, the, 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 the fact that some of these models, ladies and gentlemen, have inherent characteristics that they can't overcome. Some of these models, ladies and gentlemen, even if they are under the normal weight, according to the PMI, they are healthy, ladies and gentlemen. And as a result, this is a discriminatory measure, ladies and gentlemen. And we say that it is simply unfair. It doesn't necessarily bring forth the healthiest models, ladies and gentlemen and discriminates them solely on their weight. Now I ask you today, is weight even the, ma even the major component in assessing the beauty of someone? No, it is not. And this simply proves to you today, the BMI is not only not practical, but it is also unfair. So their whole case today, ladies and gentlemen, is based on an unfair standard. Now let's go on to assess the benefits. We say, ladies and gentlemen, that it's actually counterproductive. Because when we have this standard, the population today is proposing, we admit it forces models to gain weight just because of this fact. Because if they don't gain weight, ladies and gentlemen, they simply lose out in their industry. They simply lose out in the competition. And as a result, they are forced to gain weight by things like the big GT that my two speakers have proposed to show by this way. We say this is extremely unhealthy, just wait a minute. This is extremely unhealthy, ladies and gentlemen, because these models have gain weight, a tremendous amount of weight, in a few days. And thus, they force themselves to eat having a detriment on their health. Don't you agree, sir? Didn't you hear that we offer you rehabilitation where we cure the healthiness of these models in not just a few days or one year, in whatever year there's the healthiness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, whatever rehabilitation programs you have, we say that in the end, models, because they are forced to stay in competition with other models of their nation, of their industry, ladies and gentlemen, we say that they are, no matter what, in the end, forced to gain weight no matter what. These rehabilitation centers aren't really voluntary. We say that these models are going to be forced to gain weight under their back, simply being counterproductive to the health. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, their part, this policy is very discriminatory because it has an unjust criteria. We have to acknowledge the fact that some models dedicate their lives to becoming models and to deprive them of that opportunity, to deprive them of their career, just because they don't fit the weight standards, even if they can be healthy, is absolutely wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, first of all, in today's debate, I prove that their policy has no need, is unpractical, and has counterproductive effects. Now I'm going to ask you, after this analysis, one question. One question that we have to ask at, today's, at the end of today's debate. And this question is, will a ban limiting the use of models who are below a healthy weight promote healthier models and a healthier society? And we say, no, it, all it will do is that it's an unjust penalization of models and the fashion industry. And as I have promised, I'm going to evaluate this on two key issues. The first issue will deal with how the bar ban harms the models. Now, the government speaker said that models really get unhealthy in trying to lose weight, that they are being oppressed to lose weight. The second speaker said that we have bad methods, such as bulimia, in, in order to ensure that these models are going to get them. Ladies and gentlemen, as I proved to you, we have agencies that care a lot for these models because models are very valuable to them. And as a result, they spend a lot of money actually just for the health care of these models. They spend a lot of effort also in, in, in trying to ensure that these models are healthy. Ladies and gentlemen, they, these agencies don't treat models like slaves. And in the end, when we think about the issue of publicity, we have agencies, in order to have a good publicity, not have to have healthy models that they can truly show that, that they were nurtured by themselves in a healthy way. Models also have to be healthy looking, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that many models have, are losing weight through um, bad means such as bulimia are leading to their criticism, ladies and gentlemen, thus accounting for a detriment to their publicity. And ladies and gentlemen, when we say, when we bring up this issue of the publicity, we say that the models and the agencies is just beneficial for themselves to nurture, to grow in a way, a healthy way, ladies and gentlemen, not a, not a way by a restrictive criteria. Now let's go on to the opposition side of the debate. We have, we have argued today, ladies and gentlemen, that this policy is discriminatory. There is no one set criteria for judging beauty and appeal, ladies and gentlemen. Beauty and appeal are concepts that are made of lot, many characteristics, many features, ladies and gentlemen. And, to, and for us to judge the capability of a model to compete with others, ladies and gentlemen, solely based on their weight is absolutely wrong. It is the wrong standard, it is a standard that discriminates, ladies and gentlemen. 
Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, we still we continue to argue that people have dedicated their lives. And we still find that many models are still healthy, even though they are beneath the, the weight set by the BMI. Now, going on to the second issue uh, about how plants harm the society. Now, the government today, ladies and gentlemen, said that models have to appeal to the public and, as, as a result, influence other people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, recently argued that there is simply no correlation. People just don't follow what they see. They have what we call a rational thinking, a critical thinking. And just because they find some models attractive, they, they won't really follow the models as for their career. The population said of the house today clearly failed to prove this issue. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we say that having no ban sends out the right message. We are in an era when the trend of well-being is pro prospering. And as a result, the right message that our case sends out to the society is that if you have a healthy model, and healthy models who didn't have to forcefully adjust his or her weight just because of that BMI index that they're proposing, ladies and gentlemen, we say that is the right model for the globalized era of today's society. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, let's look and see what we have proven. We have proven that there is no need. No, it's not practical and it's actually counterproductive. The case is based on an unfair standard, ladies and gentlemen. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, we have pro proved to you that the harm not only goes to the models, but also to the society and the fashion industry. Now, taking into account all these factors, ladies and gentlemen, you have to propose today's motion. Thank you very much. Anorexic or bulimic at the 
accomplished and wanted to assert is just their natural tendency that they don't have any control over. We talked about how if we apply this policy, many moms, in order to stay in the game, in order to not be pushed out of the public's mind, will force on natural measures to increase their rates. And this will be extremely unhealthy to the models themselves, which the population seems to be so concerned with. We also mentioned how it is unfair to penalise these models for being dedicated to their job, to being dedicated in maintaining a healthy figure. We mentioned that those models who use their healthy lifestyle to, for publicity, and how many models actually are focusing on the well-being trend in society today. So this point four for the population. But moving on to the third and final issue of how it affects society. Now the population hugely underestimated the ability of the public to think. They said that many people simply could become anorexic or either bulimic and starve themselves simply because Kate Mars looks gorgeous on a catwalk. The fact of the matter is that society is mature enough to decide. The fact of the matter is um, magazines such as Vogue and Elle criticise these models who use and who have anorexia and bullying, bullying are hugely. It is scandalous for models to do so. And their publicity drops, they become unpopular. And the fact of the matter is society is mature enough to decide. So ladies and gentlemen, what have we told you today? We've told you that the population had a shaky premise to start off. They did not have a clear criteria of what is healthy weight to start off in the first place. But even if we assume and pretend for the sake of the population that they did have a healthy criteria, we clearly established how it's unfair to the models and the fashion industry which is concerned with the health of the models themselves. So ladies and gentlemen, beauty is a moving trend to adjust policies and ban models from their, from their um, dedication just because of a beauty trend that seems to be